Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Wadier. And I'm Tommy Welling, and you're listening to the Fasting for Life podcast. This podcast is about using fasting as a tool to regain your health, achieve ultimate wellness, and live the life you truly deserve. Each episode is a short conversation on a single topic with immediate actionable steps. We cover everything from fat loss and health and wellness to the science of lifestyle design. We started Fasting for Life because of how fasting has transformed our lives, and we hope to share the tools that we have learned along the way. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Fasting for Life podcast. My name is Dr. Scott Wadier, and I'm here, as always, with my good friend and colleague, Tommy Welling. Good afternoon to you, sir. Hey, Scott. How are you? Doing great, my friend. Going to be a good conversation today, Mm -hmm. Uh, and... I think we're going to have some good aha moments that are going to come out of today's conversation and some of the nuances and hopefully give you guys some real life actionable things as we always embark to do on when we have these conversations on the podcast. So shout out to all of you listeners that have been with us on this journey for a while. If you guys are new to the podcast, uh, you can go back and listen to the first few episodes and learn more about who we are and our journey and why it is. Uh, that we're in the 90s now in terms of amount of episodes that we've put out and how we continue to find and um, redefine, you know, how we apply the fasting for life lifestyle, how we get fasting and work fasting into our day to day lives. Um, And this is really all based around uh, losing the weight, regaining your health and living that life to your fullest optimum potential and what that looks like for you as the individual listener. So yeah, to, today's topic is going to hopefully simplify a lot of complex different conversations and potential health related issues. And we're going to talk about uh, blood pressure and kidneys and heart cardiovascular risk disease and, and um, all of the different layers in between. And we're also going to talk about why you pee so much when you start fasting and what's actually <laughs> happening. And Tommy's laughing like, did you just say that? Yeah, TMI. But why why you're running to the bathroom and what you should do about it. And is that normal and what you can expect to see in terms of changes related to blood pressure and blood volume as you start to adopt the fasting lifestyle? Yeah. And um, I, I think it was interesting uh, how this conversation kind of came about because going through the challenges and, and Q and A's and things like that. And one of the most common questions that we get is like, um, I, I don't, I just started fasting. I um is this normal? Um I you know I'm feeling like a little bit of blood pressure changes. I'm, I'm like you said I'm having to run to the bathroom a lot. Um is that normal? Is that is that part of the process? And just kind of um there, there's there's some issues that can can come up like right at the beginning when you start fasting and as you kind of make the adjustment as your insulin uh rebalances um and just a, a lot of processes that go along. Yeah, it's it's really going to start from, okay, what do we see? What do we hear? What are the questions we get? <clears throat> and one of the biggest um, you know, benefits to fasting is the fact that it helps get to the underlying cause of things like weight loss resistance, insulin resistance, uh, and, and things in that light. So mm-hmm. never mind does the scale come down, but you also see these health benefits as well. And if you've been on the uh, calorie counting, macro tracking work more, work out more, eat less kind of low and slow plan, then you've probably ran into some of these sticking points along the way. You've come to fasting for weight loss in most, in most cases, just like you and I had Tommy, Mm -hmm. but what are the things that you're going to uh, encounter? And then what are the things that we can expect to see in terms of changes in some of these health metrics? And it, I, that's why I kind of, you know, jokingly said, well, you're going to run to the bathroom a lot. So why, what is happening there in the fact that when you start fasting, um, you're going to experience this thing called diuresis, which mm-hmm. is your body is excreting water through the kidneys. And it's right. all hormone controlled, just like fat storage or fat burning from, mm-hmm. you know, where insulin is that, that on off switch. But why, why is that happening? And then what are those small changes you can expect to see? And then more importantly, how that affects those cardiovascular related issues, kidney related issues, yeah. blood pressure related issues, et cetera. Yeah. It's, it's crazy because it all starts with that, with what you just said, that diuresis. And, and that goes along with those first few pounds that you can lose 
um, if you've started any, you know, weight loss plan that's been effective, like right at the beginning, especially when you, if you came off of just really kind of unintentional eating, right? Like, like poor food choices or, you know, over, over indulgence and, and things like that processed carbohydrates. And if you lost those first few pounds, uh, you may have noticed, depending on how quickly it happened, that, that you were peeing a lot. Uh, and that goes along with the diuresis. And, and that diuresis is actually caused by um, insulin levels coming down. So if you've been going throughout your day-to-day life um, and insulin levels have been high, you've been holding on to more salt and more water. Uh, and then when you go into a, a, any weight loss plan that's actually um, effective, but if you start fasting, especially, you can see these effects very quickly. Insulin can come down very quickly. You have a quick diuretic effect, and that can be multiple pounds that, that drop. That can be the water weight. Um, and that's actually some of the glycogen stores that you have uh, leaving the body or being, being burned. And then the water and salt leaving the body, um, through the kidney being excreted through the kidney. So one of the things here is that it's okay. So it's like, what are we here? What are the questions we get? And it, mm-hmm. you know, the bathroom questions, one, the water questions, one, uh, yeah, why am I so thirsty? Yeah. Why am I thirsty? So we encourage to increase your water and electrolytes, things like Himalayan sea salt, Himalayan salt, sea, a good, uh, a good quality sea salt, um, like a Redmond's or um, a, a trace mineral, something that's going to help balance out those electrolytes. And mm-hmm. we're going to explain just briefly from a science perspective, what's happening. But um, the, one of the studies that we first referenced to kind of have the, you know, start to unpack the conversation of how do we connect the dots and why is it important? You know, this was back in the 1950s, 1953. And the, the title was anti-diuresis associated with the administration of insulin. So in the study, they started administering insulin to patients And what they found was that the body would retain, so it'd be the opposite of diuresis, diuretic, which is the flushing, right? Mm -hmm. The opposite happened. When insulin levels raised, what was the mechanism? Well, there's a hormone that controls um, the reabsorption of uh, sodium, which then comes with the water portion, right? That Mm -hmm. pulls the water back into the body. Yeah. And- um, that's aldosterone. So that is a hormone that is created by your adrenal glands, which we'll get back to here in a minute. So when you start fasting, Tommy, the insulin crashes, right? Because you're not yeah. having three meals a day, plus snacks, plus flavored waters, plus, you know, mm-hmm. uh, so you those know, juices, uh, sodas, juices, all the stuff, plus the, you know, the, um, the uh, half eaten ma- apple gate, <laughs> maple, turkey sausage off your right child's plate as you're cleaning up everything yeah yeah the third meal that you've made them that they haven't eaten that day i know it's just us no no other kids do that but no um so it's it's you don't have that high level of insulin so insulin actually will drop which then drops aldosterone and aldosterone Mm. again is a um is a messenger that is created by your adrenal so we're going to touch on the adrenal and the stress component of this too in just a minute yeah because it's it's all interrelated and and that's why we we started off by saying, you know, we're, we're going to hopefully land the plane and simplify a few, you know, overarching kind of themes. And, and there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of arrows pointing in a lot of different directions when you look at any, you know, schematics on this, this stuff, like in a physiology textbook, and we're, we're trying to make it, you know, a little bit more actionable here. And, and the reason why is because when you first start off with fasting, you can experience some of those things where you're, you're losing a lot of water all of a sudden. And now I'm, I'm, I'm more thirsty and I've dropped a few pounds and, and I think it might be water weight. So why is it? So, um, when, when we start looking at the next level of this, and we start talking about the hormonal component, it's, it's interesting too, because you just mentioned aldosterone and the fat cells that we're already holding onto are also, uh, playing a role on the aldosterone system. And, and our fat cells are actually sending out more messenger signals to further increase the aldosterone. So further increasing the sodium and water retention, leading to more of that, that swelling. I'm holding on to water. My blood pressure is, is, is raised because of it. And so the, the fat cells that we're already holding on to are making that problem worse, right? Yeah. So how can we get the weight off you know, quickly and effectively and safely as well, not to have the rebound mm-hmm. um, or the regain as, as you know, a lot of us have, have dealt with over the years or, or people that are coming to fasting and intermittent fasting type of lifestyle. Sure. You mentioned something there about blood pressure that was really um, interesting to me because what we're finding is that salt has been demonized, right? So yeah. when we talk about increasing your salt intake using Himalayan salt, trace, trace minerals, 
um, or electrolytes, you, you're really wanting to balance um, that effect of that negative effect of aldosterone on the kidney, which yeah. is, um, you know, long term can have high long term chronic blood pressure, it can lead to oxidative stress, damage to the DNA. It can affect, you know, uh, congestive heart failure. You can have flutters and fibrillations and fibrosis of the heart and the different ventricles. You can have cardiovascular disease or cerebrovascular diseases or strokes. You can have placking in the arteries. Um, You know, so having that long-term high blood pressure is something that, um, you know, the reduction of sodium has been one of the core competencies or core things that's recommended to counteract Mm -hmm your yeah. rising blood pressure. And if you look at the different medications that are out there, and this is not medical advice, so don't go to your doctor and say, hey, listen to this podcast. And they said to you know, stop taking my blood pressure medication because it's not right. fixing the problem. My encouragement is to you know, think through this and then have the conversation. Am I addressing the underlying issue? So what, there's two things here to help regulate aldosterone. If the goal is to decrease right, the fat, which is sending the signals, creating putting more stress on the adrenals, which is causing the adrenals to stimulate more aldosterone, which is then Mm. telling the kidneys to retain water and uh, increase the swelling and the blood volume that you have on your body, right? The water weight, weight in general. And then Mm. it has all those effects on all of those different um, organ tissues, heart, brain, kidneys, you know, blood vessels that we just talked about. Right. How do you counteract that? Well, um, it's contrary to the standard status quo watch your sodium intake. Hmm. And what I mean by that is too little sodium, not too much is the stressor that causes the adrenals to produce more of the hormone that te- causes your body to retain water, Correct. Yeah, which then allows more glycogen storage, which then allows all of that swelling and stuff we talked about. Yeah. So that's number one. And number two is the ways to decrease this would be to manage your insulin levels. And the studies show that insulin acts directly on the adrenal gland, bumping up the production of those adrenal steroids, which is the aldosterone. So you've got like a trifecta of issues here. Mm -hmm. And this is where fasting comes into play, truly. Yeah, because when when insulin levels rise to to the level of, of an overweight to an obese person, not necessarily somebody who's a diabetic person, um, when insulin levels rise to those levels, we have a 50% reduction in salt and water clearance through the kidney. That means that you're, you're clearing out that stuff in, 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 it takes you twice as long to clear out the same amount of water and sodium. So that leads to overall water retention, much, much bigger swings in things that you could actually see on a day-to-day basis, like the swelling um, in different parts of the body and, and things like that. And uh, you know, the, the aldosterone, issue itself is, is just being perpetuated by the adipose tissue. So like you said, you know, work on getting the fat off and bringing the insulin level down. And then you start, you start, you can have a really powerful effect on all of these, these issues in a very short order of time. Yeah. There's a lot of arrows here, right? So you've got the fat cells that are producing, you know, uh, resistant and leptin resistance, which is telling your body that you're not full and it's increasing your insulin resistance or decreasing the effectiveness of the insulin. So you need more, which can lead to prediabetes and diabetes, chronic inflammation uh, based on a low level activation of the immune system. Aldosterone also mimics some of those same things and leads to the retention of water. So we've been told for decades that watch your salt content, watch your salt content. Now I'm not talking about like the Morton's table salt. Like mm-hmm. I'm talking, or like the prepackaged foods that have the sodium in it. I'm talking about right. like real salt. So removing those and putting in real sources of, of salt. So sea, yeah. a good Celtic sea salt, a Redmond's, a, um, a good trace mineral, that concentrate company that you and I use and we love, yeah. um, the Himalayan salt. That is actually going to have the exact opposite effect. And this is why when we see these results inside of our challenges and our coaching and whatnot, when we're doing the one-on-one mm-hmm. is that people will be like, Hey, I I'm feeling kind of weird. Like I got a little fuzzy. I'm kind of yeah. it's not lightheaded, but I'm just kind of like, I feel a little fatigued and like, okay, yeah. well, are just you a taking blood pressure? Medic- yeah. yeah. A little off. Right. Yeah. I'm, well, you're feeling these transitions. And I remember my dad who was here visiting and he did, he was, he was like 40 pounds down off of like 10 meds. 
And he had a couple left. He had a couple blood pressure. He yeah. had, I want to talk about diuretics in a second. He had a diuretic and an antihypertensive. And um, I remember him like just getting super tired. And I was like, mm. I was, I was out, came home. My mom's like, dad, that's just not feeling good. I'm like, here is three teaspoons of Himalayan salt. Have him oh, chug oh, this. Wow. And within yeah. 20 minutes, he was back up. We tested his blood pressure and um, it was back within normal range, but his pulse was still really low. Mm. So I started doing some research and, you know, I looked up the last few remaining medications that he was on. And one of them actually caused your pulse and your heart rate to dip. So mm. he called his doctor. Doctor took him off two medications just based off of his most recent changes in the, in the quick weight loss. Yeah. And he's never gone back on them because he maintains the fasting lifestyle. He's able to keep the um, blood volume balance by using good sources of salt and sodium yeah. and the fasting windows, keeping the insulin down, which is keeping the stress off of the adrenals, which is producing the aldosterone, nice. which is pretty much the crux of the problem right. compared to right. the medical system, which is here's a medication to lower it. And your body says, well, no, I want it to be high for a reason. Yeah. So it keeps pushing against it. All right. It's, it's crazy. And uh, you know, even, even that one thing, the, the watch your salt intake, the, the problem there that you, that you alluded to was that the, the aldosterone levels actually come up as our, as our sodium intake goes down. But the reason it does that is because it, it's, it's a protective mechanism within the body so that it can hold on to what little salt is coming into the system because our, our body has to have salt in order to create the right osmotic balance between our cells. So we have to, we have to have that salt so we can uh, hold on to the water that we need to stay hydrated. So when, when we lower our, our sodium intake, the body starts waving red flags all around. Yeah. And it's interesting because a lot of the, the common practices out there, um, you know, using diuretics or angiotensin two receptor blockers or calcium channel blockers or ACE mm -hmm. inhibitors or beta blockers or renin blockers uh, or alpha blockers or alpha beta blockers or central, I mean, the, the vasodilators, <laughs> but, but there is one called aldosterone antagonist. It's the opposite of aldosterone. It's literally trying to tell your body, let this fluid go so I can lower the blood pressure and take mm. the stress off of the arteries, the kidneys, the brain, ves blood vessels, yeah. uh, and all of the heart structures. So it's that chronic um, stressor, right, long term. Yeah. And that's what I love about fasting because even within just a week, you can see, you know, 10, 20 point drops in blood pressure. Yeah. Um, and it's not that your blood, your blood sugar is dropping. If you're, let's say you're a pre-diabetic or, or you think you have some insulin resistance or your blood sugar numbers are elevated, or maybe you are diabetic and you're on insulin you, in certain, in most situations, unless there's a rare tumor in the pancreas an insulinoma, then the, the danger air quotes danger, as this is an audio medium of you, of your blood sugar going too low is extremely rare. It's, mm -hmm. it's darn near impossible so it's not that your blood sugar is dropping. It's that there are medications that are pushing it down right. and your body is trying to respond. So it's, it's like we're taking care of the end result. Like we're putting just a piece of tape over mm -hmm. the check engine light yeah. that comes on in your car. Like you're going to end up broken down on the side of the road eventually, right? Like, so what I love about fasting and then insulin coming down, aldosterone coming down, all of those other factors coming down, you losing the weight, getting the fat off of your body, right. your body actually has the ability to heal and get to the upstream cause of the issue and not just the effect. Yeah. The crazy part is like um, we can go years and years and even decades with some extra body fat, right. And some, some yeah. higher than, than we should insulin. Winter level. is coming. But, yeah. Some winter storage. is coming, right. Like <laughs> we're storing it away, but you know um, uh, over time, you know, the, even, even just a few extra pounds starts to take a toll on, on the smallest capillary beds, like the, the smallest blood vessels, the smallest arteries, the smallest nerves. And, 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 and that's why, you know, uh, over time, like tingling in the fingers and all, all kinds of like little things start to happen. Right. Um, but, but as, as we can kind of balance these systems out, like the, the, the human body wasn't really designed to have all this extra weight on it with all this extra blood volume and blood pressure going through it. And it circulates right. all day, all every second of the day. And, and um, the effects are cumulative over time, especially over years and decades. This would be a weird analogy, but we here in, in Houston over the last couple of years, we've had some, some really cold weather. Mm -hmm. And I've learned through um, not knowing how to winterize a sprinkler system um, <laughs> that there has been a couple of backflow issues over the years. Yeah. So 
you do everything right and, you, and you're set. And then we get like three nights of below freezing temperature and you guys that live in Canada or like the mountains are thinking yeah. like, oh, wow. Yeah. Boo-hoo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Boo hoo. It gets negative 58 in Minnesota. Right. right. Well, things aren't built here for that. Right. We're not so prepared. Yeah. My point is everything backs up to the point where something pops. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you have this chronic high level, low level inflammation, high, high blood pressure. Yes. In the short term, it does make sense to try to decrease it. But is it truly getting to the underlying cause? No, it's not. So um, looking, you know, just to kind of put a bow on it, there was one other article that you and I were kind of going back and forth about, and this was published much more recently in August of 2010. Mm -hmm. And it's salt, aldosterone, and insulin resistance impact on the cardiovascular system. So a lot of those connections, and this was in, um, you know, people that were obese, air quotes, healthy, obese, uh, young men and women. And then there were also the categories that looked at the groups of, uh, people that had, had cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, et cetera. And we know that through all of the connections, the simplest way, the simplest answer is right in front of us. And that is sticking with a consistent fasting schedule and you don't need all of the other stuff. Yeah, it's um, it's amazing how how far fasting will take you. Like uh, a little bit of fasting goes a long way. And, and as far as just seeing the decrease in the insulin, and I mean, just jumping into your first, like your first 18 hour fast, if you've never done any sort of timed eating is going to help bring down some insulin levels. Right. And then, and if you're already fasting, taking it a little bit longer means that you have that many more hours for the insulin to come down for the blood sugar to come down and you don't need to, to keep pumping out as much insulin to, to, um, you know, shuttle all the fuel into the cells and which means the water levels have a chance to come down, water weight mm-hmm. comes off and, and things start to balance, like, you know, almost immediately, like it's going to take some time. Right. But, but the, but the, the first couple of, of steps can happen very quickly. And if you're new or if you're wondering what insulin resistance is, or if you have it, um, there are some blood tests that you can ask your doctor to order. They're not commonly ordered the fasting insulin test. Uh, but the insulin resistance assessment that we have um, on the website under the resources tab, some mm-hmm. of the things that you might be experiencing if you have insulin resistance would be, do you feel hungry immediately you know, after eating? Do you feel irritable or fatigued or hangry? Do you seem to retain water after eating salty foods? Now, we're not talking about the Himalayan salt and the, the, the trace minerals, and the, but we're talking like the, the sodium-filled foods, I should say. Sure, yeah. Um, do you get tired after a meal? Do you crave? Do you have cravings? Mm-hmm. Tired in the afternoon? Do you gain weight easily, like if you overeat carbohydrates? These are all things that are indicating that the insulin is high, aldosterone is high, and uh, you're, you're on a path towards blood sugar problems, prediabetes, and then diabetes, and all the other heart and uh, systemic-related problems. So, if you have not taken the insulin, resist- insulin resistance assessment, that's a mouthful, you can head to the website, uh, www.thefastingforlife.com. And Tommy, as words of encouragement for someone that is new or someone that's struggling with the diuretic blood pressure, can't seem to just get traction, is, is, is having, having trouble like wrapping their brain around it. Like, how do we take someone from there to the aha moment of, oh my gosh, this is working. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking back 10, 12 years ago when my blood pressure started to creep up just a little bit and I wasn't quite sure. And then I'd have the, I was 30. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? I work out six days a week. Like I've I've got 20 inch biceps. I can, you know, bench press a Buick. I'm like, what what am I doing? I could run five miles. I can run a 5k. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Right. What am I doing wrong? And it, it just seems to be creeping up, but it's kind of unpredictable. Like, what about the, the swelling or the fluid retention every once in a while? Like, I can't quite seem to get a to get a handle on it, you know, but put that together with the volatility on the scale. And I would see the water weight come and go. And, and it, it turns out it was carbohydrate and insulin, you know, dependent. Right. But mm-hmm. I didn't realize it at the time. So words of encouragement would be if you haven't fasted before, if you haven't really done like deliberate timed eating windows and and fasting windows, then, then start there. And if you have, and you're still like, ah, man, I'm, I'm still battling with some of this stuff a little bit, then, then push your, your fasting window just a little bit longer, give your body a a little longer chance to rebalance some of these insulin levels, aldosterone, 
and, and, and watch things start to, to kind of fall back into place a little bit better. Yeah. And if you've been, that's a good point. If you've been doing IF, <clears throat> as we kind of put a bow on today, intermittent fasting, like a 16 or an 18 hour window, mm-hmm. um, or you've even been doing something up to like a one meal a day, right. And you still yeah. haven't seen that drop, then yeah, you're going to want to push from 18 to 22 or 24. Easy way to do that is have an easy, uh, an early dinner one night and then a later dinner the next night will get you mm-hmm. past that 22 to 24 hour mark. Yeah. If you want to go past that, you can do a lunch to the following day dinner, which is a 30 hour fast. You got a nice good yeah. sleep in there. You wake up the next morning. You're typically not hungry. You got some black coffee to get you through the early afternoon hours. Mm-hmm. You're going to do the salt or Himalayan salt a couple times throughout that process. And you should notice just this com- pun intended, this weight, this fluffiness, mm-hmm. this fuzziness just come off of you. So encouragement, if you haven't seen it yet, or you haven't broken through that yet, it is right there. It is right around the corner. Um, and we want to encourage you to, again, go to the website. You can download the fast start guide. It's six steps to putting in one meal a day fasting into your life, into your lifestyle, or the insulin resistance assessment. If you've been following us for a while and you want to get a little bit more clarity and maybe why you're not seeing the results that you've been looking for, or if you've hit a plateau, or if you just want to get a little bit uh, you know, more granular with your health journey. So, yeah. Tommy, I think we got it, man. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think well, it's good. I think it's good. All right. Thank you, Sarah, as always, for the conversation. I appreciate you guys listening. Uh, if you want to drop us a review, we pr- prefer the five-star kind of course. That tells us, that tells the uh, people in charge at Apple and Spotify and all the places that you listen to your podcast that we are doing good work um, and that people want to listen. So appreciate you guys as listeners. Keep up the great work, Tommy. Thank you, sir. And we will talk soon. Thank you. Bye. So you've heard today's episode and you may be wondering, where do I start? Head on over to thefastingforlife.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive fasting tips and strategies to maximize results and fit fasting into your day-to-day life. While you're there, download your free Fast Start Guide to get started today. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to leave us a five-star review, and we'll be back next week with another episode of Fasting for Life.